Broadloom. Uh, welcome to Training Tuesday. Today's topic is the recent uh, updates on ERP that are coming out this month. All right, so we're going to talk about the Q2 update as well as a couple things to expect in Q3. So the first and most important thing that's going to roll out early Q3 is a big and a little one at the same time. So when I go into sales processing, for example, I get this printer pop-up box. And for those of you that have used Rollmaster a long time, you're kind of used to it. But the big change is this is no longer going to pop up. So we're not going to ask you what printer you want to use 20 times a day anymore. This pop-up box is going to completely go away. So mostly that's a good thing, but there's a couple things you'll want to be prepared on. So we're going to remember what printer you're using based on your user ID. So that means you definitely don't want to share user IDs because if two people are using the same user ID, we could be remembering the wrong printer. So first and foremost, make sure everybody has their own user ID. I would hope that's already the case, but I want to mention it because it'll cause a little pain with uh, the printer default. So make sure everybody has their own user ID. Then the only other difference that you really need to know is that we're going to show you what printer you're using at the bottom of the screen so I can see that my printer is email. And if I want to change that, um, I just have to go on whatever screen I'm in to print, select printer, and change to a different printer. So again, we're showing you the printer at the bottom. We're no longer going to ask you what printer. We're just going to use that printer throughout the system. And if you ever need to change to a different printer, just go to print and select printer on whatever screen you're operating in. So hopefully that's a, a net good change. We're no longer going to ask you for the printer. You just got to make sure your user your users are set up in the system and you're not sharing user IDs and then pay attention to the printer at the bottom. And if you want to change it, hit select printer and change printers. So that should be coming in early Q3 and is one of the, the biggest changes as far as your day-to-day -day activity goes. All right, so now we're going to cover uh, next major feature, which is um, Flooring Stores United Catalog Import. So this is for um, a select few dealers that are Rollmaster ERP clients, and they're also part of the Broadloom Retail Selling System, Flooring Stores United. So um, the item catalog for the entire selling system has now been automated to come into Rollmaster. There is one initial setup you have to do first, and that is in vendor maintenance. So in accounts payable vendor maintenance, you have to go in and pull up the vendor and you'll see this new field here called alpha and you'll have to put the proper name in here. In other words, we're expecting certain names for the vendors and we need you to fill that in here. We will provide you a list of what those names need to be, but this is essentially a crossover. So you may have a vendor ID different than other dealers, but we're still able to tie it to Dixie Home. So once that setup's complete, then when there are pricing changes, they're gonna come through B2B. So I'm gonna go to B2B catalog process and I'd have a vendor called FSU Vend, and I would view this import. And that's gonna pull up the import, the live latest version of the import. And in one swoop, this is going to update all of your pricing for products as well as add items and drop items. So you can scroll through and review it. And then when you're ready, you click the import button. So very similar to B2B, it's a very streamlined and automated process to get you the most up-to-date pricing on all of the flooring products that you purchase through the retail selling system. And that's it. It's a pretty quick and easy one, but it definitely uh, takes care of a pain point of making sure you have the most up-to-date pricing in your system. All right, now we're going to hit a couple new updates that you'll notice within order entry. So uh, one of which, the small one here, would be when you click on a line item, we added the item description down here. So the item description is an existing field within catalog maintenance, and it is informational only. And what I mean by that is it doesn't print on any documents. So this is a good spot to convey information to your salespeople about a product. So they could see this when they were actually adding the product, 
Now we added this to the screen in quotes and orders. So it's at the bottom of the screen and they can see it at any time, not just at the moment they add the item to the order. So that's a little small change, but this item description is a field in catalog maintenance and it's now visible in order entry. Now, a little more exciting change is there's a feature in the system when you go to a line item in a quote or an order and you right click, you can view last price. So this feature has been there a while, but I still meet a lot of clients that are not aware of it and are happy to find out about it. So for some of you, this may be the first time using the feature. For others, we've made some significant enhancements to it. So now when I click this item and I do a right click view last price, I get a screen that basically gives me the purchase history for this client, for this exact product. So essentially, I want to know what I charged this customer last time, and I don't want to go back and find the last time they bought it and dig in and out of orders. So this gives me a quick one-stop shop to see what they uh, paid for this item last time, as well as how much they bought. Maybe they got a discount because they bought a whole lot of it, or maybe I'm just really inconsistent with my pricing here. Now, the more recent enhancement is that we melded quotes and orders together. We previously showed you all their order history or their quote history, depending if you did this from a quote or an order. Now we're showing it together so that you can see uh, what you've quoted them, what you've sold them on this product all in one screen. Then uh, we gave you a branch drop down box and this checkbox to include quotes in case you want to see those too. And you'll notice that has a quote beside a cue beside it for a quote. And then the other enhancement was all colors. Maybe they're buying a different color of the same product. So I want to see what we charged them last time when they bought a different color. And each time you do that change, you need to hit the build button. But there I've got quite a bit of hurt purchase history when I look at all the different colors of this product. And once again, I can see how much they bought and what price they bought it for. Now, Sometimes you might see an outlier, like maybe you sold it really cheap for some reason and you want to know why. You can also do a right click here and hop into that other quote or order because maybe there's more information about what else they purchased or there's something in notes you need to look at. Maybe there was a reason this price was outside of their normal price. So this allows you to jump into that order, review notes, review anything else about the order that might help you with why you gave them that special price before. And then when you hit exit or escape, you're right back where you were at the view last price screen. And again, exit or escape again, and you're right back where you were in the job. So uh, quick summary, the new feature is go to any line item, right click and view last price, and you get a quick view of what they paid for this product last time, including all colors, including quotes and order history as well. And then you can right click and drill into that if you need to as well. All right, the next feature is going to be related to doing will calls. Um, a lot of clients do will calls where they may send the installer to pick up orders or maybe somebody in the warehouse will go pick up the orders. And oftentimes when you're doing a will call, if it's the installer picking up, you still need to be able to print your work order out. So what we've done to enhance that is if I were to go into the purchase order module, Then up at the top of the screen, I have functions and ship via code maintenance. And I have my various ship vias and we'll look at pickup here. For example, there's this checkbox to say that this ship via is special. It's a will call. And you can do that to more than one of them. You can check that will call box and that's just going to um, create a subtle difference in behavior in the system. But essentially you're designating which ones of these ship vias are will call. They, you can name them whatever you want. It could be installer pickup, will call, whatever. But this checkbox is going to uh, create a small difference in behavior. Now, when I go to an order, and I have an example set up, I've got this item on line two, and it is out on a PO. And the line item of that PO has it designated as a will call. And just to show you that, I'm going to go view assign, assignment. 
and I'll see my ship via is pickup. And as we saw a couple screens ago, pickup is designated as a will call. So what that means is basically I need this item to print on the work order where traditionally if it's out on a PO, we wouldn't print it on the work order because it's not in your warehouse, you're not shipping it. But in this instance, we need it on the work order because the installer needs to see that it's a will call. So we're gonna go down to print a work order. And when I hit select all lines, I have multi bin turned on here. So that screen might not apply to some of you. Um, this line will be selected automatically. And I hit continue. Of course, I need to print to a PDF if we wanna see the document. So I hit continue. And it's going to automatically print this on my work order. And it's going to show this verbiage here that it is on order. Here's my PO number. Here's the vendor and the reference number in ETA. So this line item will now print on your work order because it was designated as a will call. And it also provides other pertinent information. So the installer has what they need when they're going to pick up the will call. So that was just designed to improve a little communication to the installer. All you have to do is designate your ship via's will call that this applies to, and then make sure you flag that on your PO and this extra verbiage will automatically print on your work orders. All right, next feature is a, a pretty small one, but we will go to inventory control, inventory reports, and inventory usage report number 13 on my menu and there have been some changes to this screen recently where you can select multiple branches it used to be kind of a all or nothing you could pick one branch or you could pick all branches now you can pick and choose so i could say i just want this branch and this branch um, but the other major change is we're now skipping over inactive items in your catalog. And the end result of that will mainly be a speed improvement. So there's a few other changes to this screen that um, have been around a couple months now. But the biggest change over is we're skipping over inactive items. Oh, it should be a large uh, speed improvement when running this report. And for the next change, we're going to dive into the installation system and go to installer maintenance. And you may have noticed this lookup screen got a little bit more robust. We'll go ahead into one of these. And we've got these license fields we added a while back. Uh, some dealers were saying they had to track things like driver's license and maybe deduct if their license expired, but at minimum they needed to know when it expired. Um, sometimes it was vehicle tags and insurance. So um, you've had the ability for a while to add those in along with the percentage deduction, expiration date, et cetera. And what we changed on here uh, was displaying it in the installer payables report so that you'll see that when you're processing installer payables. So I'll try to run through an example of that if we can for big stone granite. And then I will also note that under functions, this is a big change. You can do a mass update of the verbiage. So we were showing that on a per installer basis and you could type it in and they could be different per installers. But if you wanted to standardize that a little bit, you could go functions, mass update of license ID verbiage. And I'll say for all my subs, and hit continue, that's going to update all my uh, subcontractors so those fields have that. So if I go back into Big Stone, there I'll see it's been updated to those. All right, this will be one of the larger and potentially exci most exciting features in this update. So we had a feature in the system that we called service charge. And it's been enhanced several times over the past two years based on customer demand. But what service charge does is allows you to automatically tack on some extra charges to an order. And this was originally uh, 
written into the system as a way to help recoup use tax. But we've had clients use this to help recoup recycling and dumpster fees. And most recently, fuel surcharge. So you can call this recouping you're doing anything you want. I'm going to talk about it in the context of a fuel surcharge because that's what um, we've seen be the most popular current utilization. So to turn this feature on that we call service charge, I'm going to go to system maintenance, system control maintenance, company control, company control one. Bottom right is enable service charge. And when you turn that on, you'll get a pop-up about talking to Rollmaster. And then you'll fill out this screen. Now, originally this was just a company-wide setting and we got more granular. We got this down to the branch and the job type. So you do need to enable this at the company level. However, I would encourage you to set it up afterwards at the job type level. So to do this, you have to have a dedicated product code. In my case, it's SC, but you have to have a specific product code that you don't use for anything else. And then you're gonna put in how much you're charging for this service charge, 5%. What I wanna call it, if I wanna replace the word sales tax with something else like miscellaneous. And then if I'm gonna include invoice lines, zero tax rate jobs, and if there's a cost to this. Now I'll get into this in more depth because you'll actually, what you do at the company level will be overridden by what you do at the job type. So moral of the story, set up a product code for this and enable this at the company level. Then you may want to enable or disable this at the branch level in branch control too. So over at the right, you have branch service charge enabled and you would say yes there. Now where I want you to do the real work is at your job types. So I'm gonna to go to sales processing, sales processing setup programs and job type maintenance. And I have some job types like say builder work that I'm gonna check this box to exclude from service charges. So even though I'm starting to do this service charge or fuel surcharge, whatever you may call it, I'm gonna exclude my builder work from it. This is gonna mainly affect my retail customers, for example. So I would go through all your job types and exclude any that you do not want this to apply to. All you do is check that box. Now, down here, I have a job type for replacements, and this is where I have the real settings that are going to take precedent over what I said at the company level. So I'm using product code SC, which again, in most of your cases, you're going to need to set up a brand new product code. It would be a special charge code, and you can route it to any general ledger account you want, and you can name it whatever two letters you want that you've not used already. So then I have the charge amount. How much am I going to charge the client? So in this instance, I'm going to do a fuel surcharge of 3% of the order. And I wanna call this fuel surcharge. And in the subtotal area, um, you know, in the bottom right of an invoice, I'm gonna call this fuel SC for fuel surcharge. So that's kind of your basics of the setup. Now, um, I do want to exclude invoice lines. So usually you will not check this box. So by default, we're going to exclude invoice lines and we're going to calculate this surcharge just on the open jive lines. Then this is optional, but some people will calculate this on zero tax jobs. Some people won't. If it's the case of a fuel surcharge, you probably do want to check this box and calculate it on zero tax jobs. Now, the next field is a little more debatable. This is the cost. So 3% is what I'm charging the client. What, if anything, do I want to cost to the order? So if I put 2% in, then we're making profit on this in sales analysis and job costs. So we're charging the client 3%, we're costing 2%, and thereby we're making an extra gross profit of 1% that'll show on sales analysis and be passed along to the sales rep if they make commission on the profit. Now, I may or may not want to show this as a line item. That's up to you. And then also optional, I may or may not want to include labor and special charges. So by default, this 3% and 2% are only calculated on the material. But you could include labor and special charges if you wanted to. Now, what other second thought on that cost? 
I've seen people set it up very similar to this where we're passing along some profit to the sales rep. So if the sales rep is paid on profit, they get a small win. I've seen other people pass along nothing and say, this is a pass through. I'm just trying to recoup my cost. There's no profit to be had to share with the sales rep. And I've also seen people take this as pure profit, passing all of this on to the sales rep. And the logic behind that is the sales reps are getting hit with these fuel surcharges in their material costs because you're entering AP bills, you're job costing the freight. So they're already getting hit with these costs. So they actually deserve all of this profit to be commissionable. So highly debatable up to you guys, but it, you have to decide uh, what if any costs you're going to pass along to the sales rep here could be zero because they're already getting hit costs elsewhere. It could be a fraction of it. So they're sharing in the cost, but winning some of the profit, or it could be a pass through. Now, the key thing to note here, the whole purpose of all this is to help drive profit to your bottom line. So hopefully this helps you raise your margins a little bit, and then you just have to decide if those margins pass through to your sales reps or not. So I'm going to hit save there. And now we're going to go look at a job and see the end result here. And we've got an open order here for Dolly Parton. And you'll notice there's nothing like a fuel surcharge or anything like that on here. Now I'm going to toggle this to my job type of replacement. And the system automatically added a charge here for $121, which would be 3% of the material on the job. Now, if I were to print this out to a PDF, and then I will see that this is a fuel surcharge right here. And it was 121.49. So I showed it down here as a fuel surcharge. That was one of my options, but that is my preference because you want your client to think of this as more of a pass through kind of like your vendors do for you on a fuel surcharge. It's not really negotiable. And then um, the other real important thing to note is that this is automated. And what I mean by that is let's say the dollars change and we gave a discount on this product. It's now 21 bucks a yard. My fuel surcharge automatically changed. And then conversely, if I increase this to $5,000, my surcharge went up. So it's very automated. We're automatically forcing your reps to charge this fuel surcharge and automatically job costing the portion you want. One thing to note about this automation, you can't delete it because we're trying to enforce this policy and it takes effect immediately, even on open jobs. So some people that have implemented this have set up new job types to facilitate this and deactivated the old ones, but it is 100% automated. And with the rising costs and fuel surcharge that everybody's enduring, this is a way to pass that along to your client and try to uh, at least hold margins, if not possibly increase your gross profit margin. And these uh, fuel surcharges I showed you in an order, they do carry forward from a quote as well. So everything would initiate in the quote and this surcharge would be calculated and then carry through to the order automatically. And then one little quick revisit would be on the job types. And note that they can be different per job type. So maybe you're fuel surcharging your residential orders, but not your commercial, or maybe you're just doing different percentages or, or ways you're calculating it, but this can be different per job type. You can exclude specific job types, but note that once you make this change, it happens immediately on all your orders with this job type. And that's because it's automated. There's no, you know, changing it or messing with the calculation. We want to enforce this and automatically calculate it. So I've seen a lot of people take advantage of this in the past uh, two months. So we wanted to highlight the changes here and make sure everybody was aware and hopefully it can help you make a little bit more profit. All right. Thanks everybody. That was the release notes from and highlights from quarter two. You can find all the documentation on our website, help.rmaster.com. 
And then we have a lot of good uh, ease of use features rolling out in quarter three, such as the printer selection box and some other exciting ones. So we look forward to talking to you again in a couple months and going over quarter three release. Thank you, everybody.